and then so this is encoded and then the decoder has to spit out what number that this program calculates so these programs are all all uh, programs that calculates a natural number um, so you can see uh, from the examples that the programs can actually be quite complicated having for loops and if statements and nested uh, commands like that so it's actually complex to learn but it also gives a good uh, idea and sense of kind of what are the limitations of such programs and this is a little bit special task because usually when we think about statistical learning we think about noise and natural variation and here we have a, essentially a noise-free task but this is still something that the program can learn to some degree as you can see with these examples yes another thing that is of course very intriguing uh, whether we can do this is if we can build systems that can uh, give a natural language interaction uh, with a computer. So this is an example um, of a dialogue system that has been trained on dialogues from, from call logs to people asking questions about an operating system. And if you look uh, at, at the dialogue, it, it, it looks like it's, it's, it's actually working kind of okay. I think this is still things uh, kind of, as I also mentioned in the beginning of the course, this is something that is still in, in, in its infancy and maybe not quite there yet, but there's a lot of attention in the research community these years to try to improve these kind of methods. So I think that's also quite fascinating uh, subject. Another nice uh, application of recurrent neural networks is this uh, work by Alex Graves on training uh, recurrent neural networks to generate uh, handwritten text. So the training that you get here is quite nice, which is made by a pen uh, where you can locate the x and y coordinates of the pen. So that means that your data is a long sequence of x, y coordinates of a pen of different writers. And here you can see examples of some of the uh, data that this model has been trained on. So you can see it has been trained on different writing styles and in principle this uh, recurrent neural network has to pick up and represent different types of writing styles. So if you for example uh, give it as an input one specific writing style then in principle it should continue writing if you if you then let it work as a generator like we did with the decoder model then it should be able to generate more speech. And actually, if you take the PDF version of these slides and you click on the link uh, on the text at the bottom, you will come to a, a demonstrator on the web where you can write something yourself with your mouse and see, and also change some parameters in order to change the writing style and so on. Now, maybe I'm, I'm wrong here. Actually, you write text with your keyboard and then you can select a writing style and then it will generate uh, handwritten text according to your input. Here's an, an, an interesting thing because if you think about uh, this model, so I haven't talked some, I only talked about cost functions for classification with a softmax, but you can also do regression where your uh, like emission probabilities are Gaussians, then um, the network here actually learns about uncertainty. So in this place we have written we have written under and you can see when we generate data then in the in the kind of when we are in a letter like u we are quite certain of where we are going there's kind of smoothness but then when we finish the letter u then we are very uncertain about the next position of the of where we put down our pen and this is was also what is indicated by this kind of yellow color that is like the probability density of where we put the pen in the next step. But then once we are started writing the end, then the model becomes quite certain again. So this is really showing kind of the power of probabilistic uh, modeling also when we are talking about more uh, regression type of problem. Yes, and here is some generated data. You'll, you'll be able to make something like that if you if you type into, uh, if you try out the demonstrator. 
So just to uh, finish off the first part here, so here's an overview from Andre Kapathy on the different types of recurrent structures we might have. So the leftmost one is actually not a recurrent model, that is our good old feedforward network. So red means the input, uh, green means some hidden units, hidden layers, and the blue is the output. So the first recurrent model is one where we have one input and we want to generate a whole sequence of outputs. And we can use this kind of architecture here. And of course we can also make bi-directional variations on this architecture. And one example of this could be that we give the model an, an, as an input uh, an image and then we want to have the model to generate a caption for that image, right? So that then, then each position in the current model here will be one one letter or one word from from the caption. So another uh, model is the many to one, and this could be, for example, if we uh, we have sentiment analysis. So we have a tweet as input and then as output we have the sentiment of the tweet. We'll also see later on in the biological application how we can use this architecture for for subcellular protein localization. Then we have the many-to-many -many, which is the, the machine translation example and then we have uh, another type of many-to-many -many where we have a one-to-one -one between the input and the output and this is for example that we want to label each each point in our sequence. So that could be, for example, also used in biology, where we want to do what is called secondary structure prediction, predict which, for each amino acid, in what kind of secondary structure element this uh, amino acid uh, is in. Yes. But that is was part one overview of recurrent neural networks.